Lord Hoyle. My Lords, I seek permission to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. At the same time, declare an interest as President of Warrington Wolves oh. Rugby League Cup. Oh. Oh. Winners of the Rugby League Cup. Oh. At Wembley in 2009 and 2010. <laughs> My Lords, the Government is committed to staging the greatest sporting events in the world, and the Rugby World League Cup is amongst them. The Coalition Agreement makes clear our commitment to the success uh, of the Rugby League World Cup, and we're working with the Rugby Football League to that end. Our proposals include financial underwriting comparable to that offered to the Rugby Football Union for their 2015 World Cup. I thank the Minister for that constructive reply, but could I ask her, will they underwrite the World Cup, uh, the Rugby League World Cup, to the extent that it was underwritten by the regional development agencies in the last government, namely a sum of at least one and a half million pounds. Uh, my Lord, I, I must pay tribute to the noble Lord for his expertise and his long-standing support for rugby league, uh, as he has already demonstrated to us. Um, uh, he makes reference, I think, to the letter from my honourable friend Hugh Robertson. Uh, it was, in fact, uh, the North West Regional Development Agency which had contracted with the RFL to provide uh, £1 million to support staging the event in exchange for a specified number of games taking place in their region. Now, due to the abolition of the RDAs, this position is under review. The RDAs have not yet operated their break clause, so the expectation is that at least £500,000 will be honoured and potentially the full amount. That would be in addition to the government offer of support in the interest of brevity. I won't go into details of that at this stage. My Lord, can the Honourable um, the noble Lady tell us what is the thinking that justifies 40 times the amount guaranteeing for a Rugby Union Cup final as opposed to a Rugby League Cup final and World Cup final? And can she tell us whether the amounts of money for the RDA will be as much as one million offered by the RDA since she's now abolishing them. It isn't the reality that she belongs to a department where there is not an elected northern member in it and reflects the north-south issue at disadvantage to the north once again. Well, I thank the noble lord. As the daughter of a Lancastrian and a Durham uh, mother, um, I may possibly stand for the North, but that's a little bit far-fetched, I think. He mentions the difference between the two fees. The tournament fee for the Rugby Union World Cup was part of the commitment demanding in the bidding process, but there was no such tournament fee for the Rugby League World Cup. But in the interests of fair treatment, the government has prorated the underwriting with a provision of up to £625,000 should the event not make the projected £2 million profit. This has been agreed with the Treasury. It's needed to be formally agreed by Parliament and indeed the Rugby League Board is still considering at the, this time the proposals made by the Government and we await their response probably early December. My Lords, uh, in, talk, in talking about uh, world sporting events and I declare an interest as Deputy Chairman of England's 2018 World Cup bid, can I thank my noble friend and uh, the Coalition Government through her for their willingness to support the guarantees which FIFA required and which in all fairness the previous government also signed up to, to enable our bid to be made and to thank the Prime Minister for the very active and personal support which he's giving to the bid, the decision on which will be made next week. Yeah. And I well, I thank my noble friend for that very constructive and, and helpful question and I do assure him that the government remains fully behind England's 2018 bid and will continue to support the bid in any way possible in the build-up to FIFA's decision on the 2nd of December. Uh, may, I, may I press the Minister uh, a little bit further on this? We've listened with great interest to her reply, her thoughtful replies, uh, but is there not a moral obligation here? You know, we have a situation uh, where the Rugby League organised themselves with a sponsorship for a million pounds and uh, that was from the RDA and then the RDA is swept away and they are left without the, the outward support. Now I would have thought in those circumstances as the perpetrator of the sweeping away 
that the government must step in immediately and say we will fully underwrite this. Not, not halfway, but wholly. I, I do think that the, the minister must take this back to the DCMS and press much more firmly for <coughs> fair treatment for a very, very important sport. My Lords, at the risk of incurring the wrath of the noble Lords opposite, I would repeat that we are not in such pleasant financial circumstances that we can actually honour yeah. yeah. all sorts of commitments across the board. Uh, but she uh, comes up again with the parity of treatment. And we do recognise uh, that Rugby League and Rugby Union are two different codes of the sport. We're aware they have some common interests and indeed they have swapped players, not always highly successfully. But actually in the coalition agreement, it explicitly commits to parity to ensure that the 2013 Rugby League and the 2015 Rugby Union World Cups are successful. My Lords, would the my noble friend agree that uh, to say that it is a north-south divide is rather flying in the face of the work of the Rugby League, which has spent God knows how many years trying to penetrate into the south to actually get a participation base? and that they will be encouraged to continue doing so, and that people should be encouraged to get out of their lagers. <laughs> yeah. uh, I thank my noble lord for that, in rather more robust language perhaps than I would have used. Uh, but yes, indeed, I mean, rugby league has a tremendous lot to commend it as a sport, and it would be uh, ideal if it could uh, penetrate the, the south of the country as much as the north. They are, it is a... a parallel sport, if you like, to rugby union, and both codes of the sport should be equally supported and have equal merit. Would the, would the um, noble lady, the minister, confirm that, and I welcome this, that £25 million of underwriting is going into rugby union, uh, that for rugby league it is £625,000 only, substantially less than the amount of money that they sought from the RDAs to put their bid in for the 2000 13 Rugby League World Cup. Could she say why there is such a wide variation? She uses the phrase parity of treatment. Could she define what the parity of treatment is? Because prima facie, it does not look like fair treatment, especially given that the rugby union underwritten £25 million has not changed, yet the rugby league has. The Noble Lord will be aware that the systems for putting in bids for Rugby Union and Rugby League are different, and the government response is in proportion to the requirements for both those bids. Michael. 